And now, please welcome Dr. Philip Rodionov. If you'd like to turn with me to Luke, we're just going to read from the words of Jesus. In Luke chapter 18, verse 10, it's a story or parable that Jesus told about two men that walked into a temple to pray. Verse 10, two men went into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I oh, thank you, God, that I'm not a sinner like everyone else. For I don't cheat, I don't sin, and I don't commit adultery. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week and give you a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. Jesus said, I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. I want to speak today about this tendency we have to tear others down in order to try and prop ourselves up, and how this is so against the gospel. It's not the way God wants us to be. Of course, Jesus, if you read the verse at the start of that passage, he says it was to speak to the people who were doing this, putting themselves up at the expense of others. You know, I see this so much in society and even in the church. I guess Jesus' example is about religion. I mean, I mean, you think of things like uni students. You know, you've got the science students, you've got the art students, and the sort of prejudices between the two, like, oh, the science people, oh, they're just the geeky, boring ones, you know, go to the art students, they're the beautiful, cool ones, or the other side of the story, you know, oh, those art students, they don't have the critical thinking, you know, rant, rant, all these sorts of judgmental sort of criticisms that, you know, I don't, I don't hear a lot, but we all know that sometimes it's there, you know, or sometimes it's very subtle and there, all sorts of society. Um, Obviously, a lot of countries have a lot of issues with other countries. You know, some people had wars over centuries between borders, and some people feel like some certain nationalities come to their country just to take the money and send it back to other countries, and all these other issues, or somebody's got bad cooking, or somebody's got no culture, or this sort of thing. All this judgment to try and prop themselves up at the expense of others. I'm sure you know many examples. Um, one I found quite interesting was speaking to people who maybe drink heavily, drink a lot of alcohol versus people who smoke marijuana. And I found it quite ironic that both seem to be maybe abusing their bodies. I'm not, I'm not trying to have a go at people who might choose to have the occasional beer with a friend if you choose to do that, or if you don't, that's fine. But I did seem a little bit ironic to me that, you know, the, the drinking people sometimes say, oh, those pot smokers, that is so weird. They just, you know, they're not social. They'll just stare at the wall for two hours and not even talk to their friends. Or what do the what do the other people say? Oh, those drinking people, they're so aggressive and loud, you know, they're so violent. We're not like that. We're we're chill and calm and, and loving and peaceful and you know, so the whole thing again, like put the others down to justify what you do and say that you're better than that and hence you're okay, you know. And unfortunately it happens even in even the church. Like guys, um been at a conference this week. I know you can't see this, it's too far away. That's okay, we're not trying to promote things anyway. But um there's people from a, a certain denomination, which is quite big in Australia, and the stereotype would be, you know, they're kind of liberal and you know, maybe aging and maybe declining in numbers. And some people might think, you know, are they really that into God? Are they really that passionate about God? And yet I was at a conference where people from that particular denomination were there, and they were passionately seeking God. And they even went out on the street with some other people to approach random strangers and tell them how much God loves them. And it's not something you might stereotypically associate with this particular denomination, but it just shows that we can't just put down other groups and think that they're all like such and such because, you know, it's not, it's not true. <laughs> so what should we do? You know, if the human problem is to slam others down, is to try and prop ourselves up, what should we do instead? Well, the thing is it's easy to make yourself sound pretty good because the truth is you can find humans out there who are pretty terrible at whatever it is, and you'll very easily find people who are worse than you, at least in a certain area, this or that. But that's totally the wrong way, because if we do this, we fail to look at ourselves. We are, it's easy to look good that way, 
But I'd suggest, you know, compare yourself to Jesus. How do you go then? And if you're at all thinking straight, you'll think, oh, man, you know, I'm nothing compared to God. You know, I, I do this. I'm messed up in this way. I sin in this way. And yet the answer God has for us is not condemnation. It's not judgment. It's acceptance. Like, oh, I love you, you know, like I forgive you for for who you are and what you've done. I love you. There's security in there. You, know, you don't have to try and make yourself up to be this. You just need to accept that grace that we don't deserve. Accept that love. Feel it and know it and just you really take that on. Hopefully, if you realize that, you have something to give to other people as well. I felt a bit convicted recently. There's um, a certain household I visit sometimes without saying names. And, you know, sometimes I'm cycling there. I ride a lot. And in my head, it'll be like, oh, you know, I'm just going to get there. And, oh, this is going to happen. And, you know, how those negative thinking spirals can happen sometimes. But I just felt convicted, you know, like, Colin, you're, you're being... You're being irritable. You're being grumpy around them. You know, you could you could do better than this. And the, the human side could be, oh, but at least I'm not like this that they do, and at least I'm not like that. You know, oh. No, I just felt convicted. Hey, if I just maybe ride slower the last few kilometers, so I'm just calm when I get there and not, not rush, rush, stress, stress, or have a quick prayer before you, and this, this could be for your lives as well, you know, before you see that person who might be difficult sometimes, just have a prayer just for calm. So you go in there and you're not just already on edge, but you're just ready to, you know, give the peace of God. Just yeah. you can you can do that. And that comes from just accepting the love God has for you first. <laughs> I'd just like to share some more wise words of Jesus. If you just turn back with me to Luke 6, verse 37. got notes for this one as well. Jesus said in a very famous message to people, do not judge others and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others or it will all come back against you. Forgive others and you will be forgiven. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured out into your lap. I just love that. Like I just picture blessings or something sort of ethereal like that, just you know, filling you up and just overflowing in abundance, you know, just great things that, that God's giving to you. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Then Jesus gave the following illustration. Can one blind person lead another? Won't they both fall into a ditch? Students are not greater than their teacher, but the student who is fully trained will become like their teacher. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye, like when we judge other people? When you have a log in your own, how can you think of saying, friend, let me help you get out that little speck in your eye when you can't even see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye, and then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. So the solution, don't attack others to build ourselves up, but realize that we're not this great, but know that God loves us anyway, and hopefully that change will enable you to share it with others too. To help you understand God's Word in a whole new way, go to goodnewsunlimited.com. You can sign up there to get your free devotional delivered to you each day. been paid for by the partners and friends of Good News Unlimited. Word spreads fast.